Good morning. Welcome everyone to join together this morning. Today we celebrate the memorial of the wonderful Saint, Saint Francis of Assisi. Please join me in the entrance antiphon. Francis, the man of God, left his home behind, abandoned his inheritance, and became poor and penniless, but the Lord raised him up. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. With your spirit. Let's take a moment to call to mind our sin. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, by whose gift St. Francis was conformed to Christ in poverty and humility, grant that by walking in Francis's footsteps, we may follow your Son, and through joyful charity, come to be united with you, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the beginning of the book of the prophet Jonah. This is the word of the Lord that came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Set out for the great city of Nineveh and preach against it. Their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah made ready to flee to Tarshish away from the Lord. He went down to Joppa, found a ship going to Tarshish, paid the fare, and went aboard to journey with them to Tarshish away from the Lord. The Lord, however, hurled a violent wind upon the sea, and in the furious tempest that arose, the ship was on the point of breaking up. Then the mariners became frightened, and each one cried to his God. To lighten the ship for themselves, they threw its cargo into the sea. Meanwhile, Jonah had gone down into the hold of the ship and lay there fast asleep. The captain came to him and said, What are you doing asleep? Rise up, call upon your God. Perhaps God will be mindful of us, so that we may not perish. Then they said to one another, Come, let us cast lots, to find out on whose account we have met with this misfortune. So they cast lots, and thus singled out Jonah. Tell us, they said, what is your business? Where do you come from? What is your country? And to what people do you belong? Jonah answered them, I am a Hebrew. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Now the men were seized with great fear and said to him, How could you do such a thing? They knew that he was fleeing from the Lord because he had told them. They asked, What shall we do with you that the sea may quiet down for us? For the sea was growing more and more turbulent. Jonah said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea, that I may quiet down for you, since I know it is because of me that this violent storm has come upon you. Still the men rode hard to regain the land, but they could not, for the sea grew ever more turbulent. Then they cried to the Lord, We beseech you, O Lord, let us not perish for taking this man's life. Do not charge us with shedding innocent blood, for you, Lord, have done as you saw fit. Then they took Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the seas raging abated. Struck with great fear of the Lord, the men offered sacrifice and made vows to him. But the Lord sent a large fish that swallowed Jonah, and Jonah remained in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. From the belly of the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. Then the Lord commanded the fish to spew Jonah upon the shore. The word of the Lord. You will rescue my life from the pit, O Lord. You will rescue my life from the pit, O Lord. Out of my distress I called to the Lord, and he answered me. 
From the midst of the nether world, I cried for help, and you heard my voice. You will rescue my life from the pit, O Lord. For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the sea, and the flood enveloped me. All your breakers and your billows passed over me. You will rescue my life from the pit, O Lord. Then I said, I am banished from your sight, yet would I again look upon your holy temple. You will rescue my life from the pit, O Lord. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. My prayer reached you in your holy temple. You will rescue my life from the pit, O Lord. give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test Jesus and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, Who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and beat him and went off, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road. But when he saw him, he passed on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to to the place. And when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine on his wounds, and bandaged him. Then he lifted him on his own animal, took him to an inn, and cared for him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, take care of him. If you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor to the robber's victim? He answered, the one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Francis of Assisi, which is probably one of the most well-known saints around. Um, But just something quick about his life. He, He was an important saint to me in my own vocation story, my own conversion. And just the fact that I get to uh, preach about St. Francis during my diaconate internship is also special because he was a deacon. He never became a priest. But St. Francis lived a, a, he was a life, lived a life of, of wealth. His, his father was a uh, wealthy merchant. He, uh, he sold cloth. And he kind of lived his life to the full as he, as he could. He, loved, he was passionate. And when he was 20, he, he went off to be a, a, a knight. He, was, he has goals to be a knight. He wanted to just uh, get the honor and the glory. And he went off and actually got captured 
and was in prison for a year, and it just jolted him. You know, some things in our lives jolt us, and it makes us say, what's going on? What am I doing? And that's what St. Francis experienced during that year of imprisonment. He realized that he was living a life for this world, and he was missing out on something more. Something was calling him deeper. He didn't understand it at the time. But after he got out, he was sick, he was kind of took time to heal, but he was never the same. Something was pulling on him, destroying him. And eventually, he began to read the Gospels, and he began to grow closer to God and to seek Him. And it took about four years for his conversion. He went to Rome and kind of uh, dressed as a, as a pilgrim, so he changed his clothes. He wanted to see what it would be like to be poor. And then he, another one was he had an aversion to lepers. And so one day he was riding his horse and he saw a leper, so he went the other way. And he felt guilty, so he turned back around and he was just going to give him some alms. And something moved him and he saw Christ in this person. And he embraced him and kissed him. And that was the big change in his life because he had always been afraid to approach the leper. And this changed it because he saw Christ in him and realized that he was running away from Christ. And finally, he was at a church, San Damiano, and he was praying, and this was the final step. He was praying, and he's, they say that uh, the, the cross, the Christ on the cross, spoke to him and said, Behold, my, my church is falling apart. Rebuild it. Well, St. Francis, in simplicity, begins to rebuild that church, the building. And eventually, he realized that God was calling him to rebuild the church, to, to renew the, the faith of the church. It was crumbling at the time, this Middle Ages. It was wealthy. And, and he was drawing people back to the simplicity of the gospel. Now that's how I started my vocation, my conversion. But then I ended up like Jonah today. God calls and says, I want you to go to the Ninevites. But he hated the Ninevites. These are the ones that, that had destroyed the city, the, the northern city. And he was like, no, they're, they're sinful. You need to destroy them. And so he didn't want to do God's will and went the other direction. My experience as well. We'll, we'll learn tomorrow on the next day that he gets a second chance, like some of us do. But, but the point was that he didn't want to do God's will. There was someone, an enemy, that he didn't want to love. He didn't want God's mercy for them. He could take it for himself, but not for them, not the Ninevites. These were the Assyrians. And in the gospel today, we see another story of a similar uh, scene. And, and it is brought about because this lawyer, he's a scribe of the law, says, what's the trick, Jesus? Jesus, so, you know, what do I have to do to inherit eternal life? And he said, Jesus basically said, it's simple. All you have to do is love God with all your, no. He asked the lawyer in this case. So what does the law say since you're a lawyer? He says, well, the law says, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. He just said, you're right. And that's the simplest thing you need to do. If you do that, you'll live. You'll, you'll have eternal life. That's simple, but it's difficult. And he, makes, he shows how difficult it is when the lawyer says, well, who is my neighbor? Because for the Jews, their neighbor was their own kind. They had to just take care of their own. They didn't have to worry about anybody else. Jesus is changing that whole interpretation. He says, how do you read it? He's asking for his version of it. How do you see that? And he knew what his version was. He knew that it was only the Israelites. So he tells the story of the Good Samaritan and shows that the ones who should know the most, the priest and the Levite, they are the ones that go to the other side of the road to avoid this poor person that appears to be dead. Now in their defense, the reason they're probably doing that the priest especially was, if he went near a dead person, he wouldn't be able to go in the temple. He'd be un unclean, and he had to get purified. So in his mind, this person looks dead, I'm going to go to the other side. And the Levite as well. But the Samaritan did, saw him, and he, he had mercy. He had compassion on him. And he went to the victim. Now, this person could have been lying there faking. He could have taken advantage of this Samaritan. But he took a chance, and he went up to him, and he saw that he was truly hurt and dying. He cared for him there. Then he takes him on his own animal, 
and takes a day out of his day. He was on, on a journey to Jericho himself, and he brings him to an inn, cares for him, and even leaves two days' worth of wages and says, if you need more than this, I'll pay you on the way back. Just showing the compassion that he had for this person he had no idea who he was. And so Jesus says, that's your neighbor. The one who cares for that person is the neighbor. Now for us, what is it in the, our lives that are keeping us from loving God with all our heart, our soul, and our mind, and our strength? What are those things that will come, that interfere with that? And also, who is our neighbor that we want to avoid? Those people who are difficult to love. Some people just can't help it. They're negative. They, something's happening in their lives and they're negative. And you're around them and it feels like it just drains you. God's calling us to love them like that leper, like that guy on the side of the road, like that Ninevite. Those who are in our lives that we just want to avoid, those are the ones God's calling us to, to love. That's our opportunity to show how much God's love is for them. By loving them, we love God. And Jesus also said it in, in Luke's gospel earlier, is love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who mistreat you. That's even, the neighbor is even our enemies. And Jesus gave that in the Sermon on the Plain. So for us, we have to ask ourselves, are we going to leave here and continue to walk on the other side of the road and avoid those people, those lepers, those Ninevites, those ones that appear to be dying? Or are we going to be like the Good Shepherd, the Good Samaritan, and be like St. Francis, who is going to go to them, love them, and show them the mercy like our Heavenly Father has shown us? Let us join together to offer our prayers and petitions to our merciful Father. For the Pope and all the leaders of the Church, may they be graced with unwavering zeal for the Gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, may God bless their efforts to work toward world peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering from any affliction, may they find strength and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our patron of St. Genevieve of Paris will intercede for those who are suffering in any way because of the COVID-19 virus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That through the intercession of Our Lady of Prompt Succor, we will be spared any more loss of life or property during this hurricane season. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, trusting in your great love, we pray that you hear these prayers we present through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we bring you these offerings, O Lord, we pray that we may be rightly disposed for the celebration of the mystery of the cross, which St. Francis so ardently embraced, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are praised in the company of your saints, and in crowning their merits, you crown your own gifts. By their way of life, you offer us an example. By communion with them, you give us companionship. By the intercession, sure support. So that encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us, and win with them the imperishable crown of glory. And so with the angels and archangels, and with the great multitude of the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks they have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ will be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Shelton Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. And by the help of your mercy, may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the universe. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed to those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy they should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come with you spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, through these holy gifts which we have received, that imitating the charity and apostolic zeal of St. Francis, may experience the effects of your love and spread them everywhere for the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And we God bless you in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael. Thank you.